so when you do that that kick, yeah. You know, that one, are, are there some more applications for the, the sweeps with that? Well, there's there's uh, yeah. I mean, like there's there's a lot of applications. I'll use Trevor real quick. Like that that we have a move. Um, Swole, swole work. The solo move is, 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 is usually like this here. So you see that body method right there? It's almost the exact same thing. So it's not necessarily a sweep. It's more of a compression, right? I trap, I, I trap Trevor down. I get that foot trapped and I kind of squeeze up to get him, right? That's a common one. Now, I always say, Whenever you get a chance to sweep a leg, sweep a leg, you know what I mean? Like, so there's a lot of, once you build this connection in the body, there's a lot of opportunities. If he's got that, that leg forward, right? There's times when I, can, when I can like, you know, arm drag a little bit, depending on where he goes. If he steps out with that one, probably not. If I can get this one to draw forward a little bit, right? You know, if I can get that one to draw forward, then from here, I can take it like so. The thing about sweeps like that though, is like a hip throw, you can do a hip throw in practice and the guy will go over every time. Like, you know, you'll have like a hundred percent success rate, but how much carryover do you get? Maybe not that much. These kind of throws, when you're practicing them, maybe he doesn't go down every time, but the attributes that you're building are still useful because why? Okay, if he puts all his weight on that leg, okay, and I do a sweep like this, all that's gonna happen is you're gonna kick a tree trunk, right? It's just gonna go, and you know, and you're gonna, that's all that's gonna happen. If his weight is completely off of that leg and I sweep it, what happens? Right? We're doing the, like the can can or something. So when do sweeps like this work? Sweeps like this work when his weight is in transition when it's maybe been pulled slightly out. It's not fully transferred onto that leg. He hasn't quite got his center there. So that means it's a, it's a constantly adjusting place. And it's very hard to um, recreate that in a partner setting. You know, you work this, you work that, or we'll work stuff, you know, like where I'm trying maybe, like I said, like I might, I might you know, work this kind of stuff but I don't care if it doesn't work or not. I'm working that speed, that pop, because I know that I can make it work against somebody who doesn't know it's coming, right? You know, like whatever the, you know, whatever the, um, the application, whether it's that, or maybe it's stuff like that, it's fine. Trevor's done this with me so many times, he instinctually knows I'm about to kick him in the sh ankle, <laughs> and he moves. And so I don't care, because it's still fast. Somebody new comes in, I still probably can get them. So there's lots of them, but we don't necessarily take and train these as often as we do some of our other more gross motor throws because you just don't get the same bang for your buck unless you really know how to focus on the, the quickness. Um, and hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, uh, John, Michael. Uh, yeah, uh, just John's fine. Uh, I know you guys have a very interesting inside trip variation and it's something I've been working uh, a lot lately myself but you guys uh, don't necessarily go all the way to the ground, right? You do it from the overhook because usually we're taught to usually taught, um, shuffle in, hook here, but then go all the way to the ground so there's more weight transfer on the leg I'm hooking. So you're talking about the one where you talking about the one where where you do go all the way to the ground or you don't go all the way to the ground? You, you don't go all the way to. The, I've seen a lot of Shui Jiao guys. Uh, uh, oh, okay. That, 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 so, okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll explain that one, okay? So we this inside trip is called um, Dehe, Dehe in Chinese. It actually comes from the um, uh, Mongolian language, I think, like Dehe Le, right? And we have a, um, we have a, a, a Da Dehe, which comes above, which comes above the, the knee, like the back of the knee, and we have a Shao Dehe, which is when, which I don't like because I'm almost 6'3". <laughs> but I still, I train James in it because he's small and agile. He's one of my students up there. I make him do it all the time. When you, when you might be, you know, like here and come all the way down, right? Then what we have is we have <laughs> quite literally half dehe, ban de zhuang, ban de zhuang they call it. And it's in between. So I don't attack here 
and I don't go all the way to the ground, I hit basically back of the ankle to uh, back of the ankle to pull it. And it's one that is a, a rather new move, to be honest. It was developed like maybe the last like, I don't know, 20 years or so because people became very fast in the high level Shuai Jiao matches. And so they were able to, and Shao Doha, because you put your knee down, there in Shuai Jiao competitions, there is the possibility of losing points. If anything touches the ground besides your feet, you lose points. Okay, so if I do Shao Doha, the one where I go all the way to the ground, and he goes down, no problem, I get the points. If I put him, if he misses, and I'm able to get up right away, no problem, I get points. But if I go for it and miss, and I'm down here for what they consider too long, which is usually very fast, I lose points, right? So they developed this sort of cheater way to do it without having to go to the ground. And the whole idea of it is you gotta freeze them, you have to freeze them, usually with something going the opposite way, like that, right? Some sort of like, I'm about to do a move going the opposite way to get them to sit their hips back, like so. And then once you get, once you get their hips back frozen, then you have to make this really dramatic turn and catch at the ankle, right? Very, it's, it's actually, so you go you here and then you hit it and the whole, you have to push from this leg, okay? This is the key leg right here. As I hit, this leg goes, you see how I drill it and press through it the whole way? I can't do this. It has to fully rotate all the way through. And that's, that's how you do it. So it's called Banda Drong. You hit back of ankle, like lower calf, back of ankle, lower calf, and has to be quick, has to be low. You gotta get their hips down, right? The hips have to kind of be down in place to get it to go back. Does hook, that make sense? Hook, yeah, and then the hooking leg still corresponds with an overhook, right? It wouldn't be from a time, leg. yes. Overhook, without the jacket, without the jacket, overhook. With the jacket, you have a lot more options. Here, on the inner lapel of the jacket, all these different places. But without the jacket, overhook. Um, mainly because, to be honest, mainly because of this first initial move here. This, if I have that overhook, I'm able to, to pull him a little bit to try to encourage him to drop his, his, his hips. Then as I go back, it's this hand actually, it's coming somewhere over here to get it. You don't get a whole bunch of pull from that overhook on the finish. But for the setup, you have to do it. It's this hand right here. Like if I practice my, my duh, my da duh, uh, what we call uh, banza kong, which is the empty move. If you watch this left hand, it's here. You see how I, I drive that through? Here's the overhook. And that drives through, that off, offhand drives through. Now where you get that offhand, shoulder, chest, you know, back of the, back of the arm, wherever, you know, you'll, it, it, sometimes you, you're not sure, but you, you, if you use the same force, then it'll still go the right direction as needed. Is that, is, is, is that a kind of, at least a little bit answer? Oh, oh, oh yeah, that was awesome, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Andy?